You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the selected writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on the selected writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. By, of course, Ralph Waldo Emerson. We'll start with a quote by Emerson. He says, quote, The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. End quote. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the 19th century transcendental philosopher. In my spiritual family tree, Emerson occupies the great, great, great plus grandfather slot right there above Wayne Dyer and Maslow. (laughs) I truly love the man. You can feel his energy emanating from his powerful essays. And if you haven't read his work yet, I highly recommend it. I'd suggest you start with self-reliance and then maybe nature, compensation, spiritual laws, heroism, and circles. All of which are available on the site for free download for members. And to dive deeper, I recommend the hardcover Modern Library Edition of the Selected Writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. If you're like me, his eloquence, eminent quotability, and passion for each of us to experience that transcendent joy that results from connecting to our highest self will often leave you in awe. So without further ado, I will bring you my notes on Emerson. The first big idea is called enthusiasm. Quote, enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Put your whole soul into it. Stamp it with your own personality. Be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. End quote. Enthusiasm is one of my absolute favorite words. Did you know that it comes from the Greek enthous, possessed by a god? Theos is God and en is within. I love that. So, when you're enthusiastic... God is within you. And equally importantly, when you are not enthusiastic, God has left the building that is you. Never forget Emerson's wisdom that, quote, every great and commanding movement in the annals of the world is due to the triumph of enthusiasm, end quote. So find the God within you. Get enthusiastic. And, quote, trust thyself. End quote. Socrates liked to say, know thyself. Emerson, trust thyself. In my mind, those four words come close to a complete philosophy on how to live. Add a fifth word, love, and I think we might just be there. Try it out. Let me know what you think. And here's the complete passage from Self-Reliance. Quote, trust thyself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. Accept the place the divine providence has found for you the society of your contemporaries, the connection of events. Great men have always done so and confided themselves childlike to the genius of their age, betraying their perceptions that the absolutely trustworthy was seated at their heart, working through their hands, predominating in all their being. And we are now men and must accept in the highest mind the same transcendent destiny, and not minors and invalids in a protected corner, not cowards fleeing before a revolution, but guides, redeemers, and benefactors, obeying the almighty effort and advancing on chaos and the dark. End quote. The next big idea is be godlike. Quote, and truly it demands something godlike in him who cast off the common motives of humanity and ventured to trust himself for a taskmaster. That's hot. You realize how conditioned we are? As Nietzsche says, They have turned the wolf into a dog, and man himself into the man's best domesticated animal. It truly, in the words of Emerson, demands something godlike in us to cast off the common motives and trust ourselves as the masters of our fate, to dare to dream the impossible, and to trust our highest selves on this precious hero's journey. Which leads us to his next big idea, don't follow. Quote, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. End quote. Reminds me of one of my favorite poems by Robert Frost, which I'm sure you're familiar with. 
To quote the punchline, I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So where's your path? Are you following or leading? Have the courage to take the path less traveled by, my friend. And remember, quote, God will not have his work made manifest by cowards. As Emerson teaches us, always, 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 always do what you are afraid to do. And he also advises, do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. I guess he felt pretty strongly about it. Here's a simple process to get out of cowardom. Step one, ask yourself, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? Step two, just do it. Step three, repeat. And that brings us to the next big idea, a central idea. Here's a quote by Wallace D. Waddles, the author of The Science of Getting Rich. He says, There is, as Emerson says, some central idea or conception of yourself by which all the facts of your life are arranged and classified. Change this central idea and you change the arrangement or classification of all the fact and circumstances of your life. Wow, that's powerful. We have a central idea or conception of ourselves that organizes everything in our lives. How do you see yourself as a poor kid who grew up without a lot of money, love, whatever, and now plugs away at life, trying to do your best, finding moments of happiness amidst the haze of challenges? Or as an infinite being blessed with the opportunity to give your greatest gifts to the world in this brief, beautiful human experience? So how do you see yourself? Makes a difference. A big one. Change that one idea and next big idea, take action. Quote, good thoughts are no better than good dreams unless they be executed, end quote. Okay, let's assume you've got a good vision for your life. Awesome. You've got great thoughts about how you're going to show up in the world, what you're going to create and all that good stuff. Fantastic. Now, take some massive action. In the words of Emerson's contemporary and protege, Henry David Thoreau, If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put foundations under them. And our next big idea, good luck. Quote, good luck is another name for tenacity of purpose. End quote. I love that. Luck, I don't think that exists. Behind all our stories about this person or that person getting lucky is a person who worked her butt off. Even if we're talking about a musician or model who got picked up out of nowhere, do you think he or she didn't seize that opportunity with all her soul once it was given to her? In any case, it's too easy for us to look at someone else's success and say they were lucky. Too often that's simply a poor excuse for our own laziness, our own lack of trust in ourselves. Ick. Catch yourself the next time you think someone got lucky. Trace that thought back. And then see how you may not be living up to your highest potential. Then do something bold with this precious life of yours and get lucky yourself. All right, the next big idea is called beautiful compensations. Quote, it is one of the most beautiful compensations of life that no man can sincerely try to help another without helping himself. End quote. That's got to be one of the most beautiful thoughts. Reminds me of a story told by Wayne Dyer in his fantastic book, The Power of Intention, in which he pretty much captures the science of this truth. He says, quote, The positive effect of kindness on the immune system and on the increased production of serotonin in the brain has been proven in research studies. Serotonin is a naturally occurring substance in the body that makes us feel more comfortable, peaceful, and even blissful. In fact, the role of most antidepressants is to stimulate the production of serotonin chemically, helping to ease depression. Research has shown that a simple act of kindness directed toward another human being improves the functioning of the immune system and stimulates the production of serotonin in both the recipient of the kindness and the person extending the kindness. Even more amazing is that persons observing the act of kindness have similar beneficial results. Imagine this, kindness extended, received, or observed beneficially impacts the physical health and feelings of everyone involved, end quote. That's powerful stuff, and I say we overdose on kindness today. Well, actually, we don't need to worry about that overdose because, as Emerson tells us, 
There can be no excess to love, none to knowledge, none to beauty. The next big idea, nature is not capricious. Emerson says, there's nothing capricious in nature, and the implanting of a desire indicates that its gratification is in the constitution of the creature that feels it. Wow, think about that carefully. There's nothing capricious in nature, and the implanting of a desire indicates that its gratification is in the constitution of the creature that feels it. It kind of reminds me of Napoleon Hill's classic, What the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve. More from Emerson, he says, Our desires presage the capacities within us. They are harbingers of what we shall be able to accomplish. What we can do and want to do is projected in our imagination, quite outside ourselves and into the future. We are attracted to what is already ours in secret. Thus, passionate anticipation transforms what is indeed possible into dreamt-for reality. And he says, Do that which is assigned to you, and you cannot hope too much or dare too much. That is amazing. So, what are you waiting for? You've been inspired. It's time to reap your destiny which is the next big idea. He says, quote, Sow a thought, and you reap an action. Sow an act, and you reap a habit. Sow a habit, and you reap a character. Sow a character, and you reap a destiny. I love that. Marcus Aurelius, the incredible second century Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, teaches us that, quote, Your mind will be like its habitual thoughts, for the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Soak it then in such trains of thoughts as, for example, where life is possible at all, a right life is possible. And we know that Aristotle taught us that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. And countless others have commented on the subject as well, from J. Paul Getty's admonition that, quote, the individual who wants to reach the top in business must appreciate the might and force of habit. He must be quick to break those habits that can break him and hasten to adopt those practices that will become the habits that will help him achieve the success he desires. George Washington Carver says, 99% of all failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses. And Thomas Edison's sage reminder that the successful person makes a habit of doing what the failing person doesn't like to do. And I repeat Emerson's wisdom, sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. Amen. How are your thoughts, your actions, your habits, your character? Trace them closely. Shape them consciously. Reap your destiny. How about the next big idea? Zigzag lines. Emerson says, quote, The voyage of the best ship is a zigzag line of a hundred tacks. See the line from a sufficient distance, and it straightens itself to the average tendency. I love the idea of the best ship zigzagging from one port to its destination. It's the perfect metaphor for our lives. We're so quick to beat ourselves up the moment we feel off track. Rather than spend all that energy persecuting ourselves, why not simply recommit and see the big picture? The key for me We need to create the dynamic tension Robert Fritz describes in his classic, The Path of Least Resistance. There's some notes on that one available as well. We need to get a good idea of what we want, enough to know when we get it, and then take an honest look at our current reality. Make a fundamental commitment to do our best, and then simply do the next thing in front of us. Make the phone call, write the email, write the plan, join the gym, go for the run, take out the trash, do whatever needs to be done. Maintaining the tension between your ideal and and your current reality as you move closer to your ideal vision of life. And, of course, learn to smile when our perfectly laid-out plans go to the wayside. As they say, the best way to make God laugh is to tell your plans. Have fun, do your best, laugh a lot, and remember that, quote, the years teach us much the days never knew. While you're at that, follow the next big idea, be inconsistent. Well, at least be willing and able to be inconsistent. It's so easy for us to get locked into a way of thinking or to maintain an opinion simply because we strongly felt a certain way at one point. But my God, if you can't break free and give yourself the power to change your mind, your job, your strategy, your relationships, whatever, you're, uh, 
kind of in trouble. I absolutely love Emerson's comments on the subject. He says, quote, A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, adored by little statesmen and philosophers and divines. With consistency, a great soul has simply nothing to do. He may as well concern himself with his shadow on the wall. Speak what you think now in hard words, and tomorrow speak what tomorrow thinks in hard words again, though it contradict everything you said today. Ah, so you shall be sure to be misunderstood. Is it so bad, then, to be misunderstood? Pythagoras was misunderstood, and Socrates, and Jesus, and Luther, and Copernicus, and Galileo, and Newton, and every pure and wise spirit that ever took flesh. To be great is to be misunderstood. End quote. Yes, that is powerful. So uh, my vote would be, let's concern ourselves with more than our shadow on the wall. Who wants to be a hobgoblin anyway? Give yourself the freedom to change your mind. And our next big idea is nature's compensation. Quote, cause and effect, means and ends, seed and fruit cannot be severed. For the effect already blooms in the cause. The end pre-exists in the means, the fruit in the seed. End quote. Karma. In Sanskrit, the word literally means act or action, but has the deeper meaning denoting the entire cycle of cause and effect. Emerson hits the essence of karma elegantly, as he tends to do, in his brilliant essay, Compensation. Every act, every word, every thought plants a seed. It begs the obvious question, are you planting any seeds right now you'd rather not see harvested? As you know, we must become very aware of the seeds we're planting. And, of course, plant the seeds that we look forward to seeing blossom. So what thought or habit pattern do you have in your life right now that you know is not bearing the fruit you want to see? Is now a good time to change it, maybe? I thought so, too. All right, last couple of big ideas or quick ones. The next one, envy and imitation. Emerson says, envy is ignorance. Imitation is suicide. And you might recall how Rumi stressed the ills of envy. He said, quote, On the way there is no harder pass than this. Fortunate is he who does not carry envy as his companion. And, indeed, envy is a defect, worse than any other. Emerson takes it a step further. To envy anyone is simply ignorance. Failing to recognize your own unique divine spark. Do not envy and definitely don't imitate. Be you, all of you. And we will wrap this up with one of my favorite thoughts by Emerson. He says, when nature has work to be done, she creates a genius to do it. So my question for you is, what did nature create you to do? Of course, you do know you're here to do something, right? Great. All right, quickly on um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, his bio is brief. You can learn more about him at wikipedia.com. Emerson was born on May 25th, 1803, and died on April 27th, 1882. He was an American essayist, philosopher, poet, and leader of the Transcendentalist movement in the early 19th century. Again, you can learn more at wikipedia.com, and you can download those essays I talked about, self-reliance, compensation, nature, etc., um, in the members section on the site. And while you're there, you might like to get these other notes. The Philosopher's Notes on the Power of Intention, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, The Path of Least Resistance, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Spiritual Economics, and Rumi. And we'll take a quick look at the quotes in the sidebars of the PDF, and then we'll wrap it up. We start with a quote by Emerson, which is, If I have lost confidence in myself, I have the universe against me. And... He says, for nonconformity, the world whips you with its displeasure. And a man must consider what a rich realm he abdicates when he becomes a conformist. One of my favorites, fear is an instructor of great sagacity and the herald of revolutions. One thing he teaches, that there is rottenness where he appears. And man is not what he thinks he is, but what he thinks he is. And the soul refuses limits and always affirms an optimism, never a pessimism. 
And Thomas Jefferson says, I find that the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. While Eric Butterworth says, there is only one way in which you can change your luck, and that is by altering your thoughts. And back to Emerson who says, a friend may well be reckoned the masterpiece of nature. And the glory of friendship is not the outstretched hand, nor the kindly smile, nor the joy of companionship. It is the spiritual inspiration that comes to one when he discovers that someone else believes in him and is willing to trust him. And no law can be sacred to me but that of my nature. Good and bad are but names very readily transferable to that or this. The only right is what is after my constitution. The only wrong, what is against it. And he says simply, genius appeals to the future. And a feeble man can see the farms that are fenced and tilled, the houses that are built. The strong man sees the possible houses and farms. His eye makes estates as fast as the sun breeds clouds. And to believe your own thought, to believe that what is true for you in your private heart is true for all men, that is genius. And he says, what I must do is all that concerns me not what the people think. This rule, equally arduous in actual and in intellectual life, may serve for the whole distinction between greatness and meanness. And the last couple, what you do speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. And finally, love is our highest word and the synonym for God. That is a perfect way to conclude this note on Ralph Waldo Emerson. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you'll dive more into this man's amazing work. Have a great day. Until next time. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.